on accessibility and technology, IT, information technology, and techno um, technology in general and accessibility. Today and tomorrow, we'll be able to discuss on the challenges and the most relevant lessons learned for our uh, region in Latin America with regards to accessibility. The idea is to continue to build a world without barriers for people with disabilities. This idea of a world without barriers is what uh, drives Zero Project. This is our mission and is based on the need that we uh, and the need to accelerate the implementation of the Convention of um, the Rights of Persons with uh, Disabilities so that they can fully enjoy it. That's why Zero Project on a yearly basis identifies and recognizes the key best practices that promote these rights and on a daily basis it changes the life of people with disabilities worldwide. This is a very special year, not yet because not yet because it's the first time that we are performing this conference or part of the conference here in Madrid in a in person in in person um, manner. But also we're gathering our colleagues because who are known for their work in all the Latin American or Spanish-speaking world. And together we're working in order to expand this goal for a world without barriers towards Latin America and the Spanish-speaking community. For the same reason, I have the pleasure to introduce you to who would be my partner during this opening ceremony and a very good friend of mine for a long time, Javier Quemes Pedraza. Well, thank you very much, Carola, for this uh, warm welcome. And also, thank you, everyone, uh, being here today and everyone who's connected online or through streaming. Like Carola very well said, my name is Javier Guemes. I am a man. I have a white skin, dark hair, and I am wearing a blue jacket. In the social group ONCE, I am the head of international relationships and also the president in Foundation ONCE for People with Disabilities. In Latin America, when the foundation Guemes approached us in order to, sorry, the, um, 
the uh, Discovery may approached us to, to talk about this, we had no doubt uh, about how important it would be and how much we could contribute to the Zero Project mission in Spain. In fact, today we are in a place that is not just any place. We're in Tower Illunium, who's the administrative center of uh, Illunium Administrative Group. It's a, a building that targeting accessibility and it's innovative, innovative where people with disability work. Lunin is our business group, as I said, a business group, a foundation, a social on the group, together with a foundation on the build the group, who uh, includes business with, um, with like a hotel chain, uh, the businesses in retail, IT, human capital groups, and uh, many others are part of this group. And also for us, it is an honor to be here with you all in this clear example of inclusion from 2018, since uh, Foundation Discovery uh, has been working working hand in hand with Zero Project to expand the world without barriers uh, within the Spanish speaking world. However, the low knowledge of English language in our region has generated gaps and inequality in the access to information. And together with this, the distances between our countries and continents has also become a barrier to access, get to know, and share different realities. This alliance has aimed to ease in the um, access to contents and good practices. And this has arose from Zero Project to um, over the 450 million uh, million of people uh, speaking Spanish and who represent 5.5 of the um, worldwide population. One of the first missions was to translate into Spanish all the information related to the winning initiatives of the years 2020 with the cost to education, employment, and a compiling uh, report of all the work performed by Zero Project from 2013 to 2021. That is the Almanac Zero Project. We also have official zero project networks who are managed uh, nowadays 100% in Spanish. Well, this conference is going to have a hybrid format, which means that today we will have some sessions live um, here in person in here in Madrid. Others will be virtual and others have been pre-recorded in order to make sure that all the high level speakers were capable, were able to be with us. So we'd like to uh, let you know that you will all be able to interact with 100 of but 150 experts from all over the world. Uh, these people have added uh, themselves, have joined Zero Project in order to discuss innovative policies that promote accessibility as a human right of people with disability. So since we can also uh, highlight now uh, technological in- technology initiatives that make life easier for this group of population, our goal is to make these initiatives known and we have to learn together in order to eliminate these barriers that make this a life make their life difficult and uh, make the inclusion difficult. We have to create uh, work networks that facilitate inclusion in um, Latin America and all the Spanish-speaking world. We know that in our region there are a lot of efforts being made in order to promote the inclusion of people with disabilities, but in many occasions these initiatives are not connected to each other and they're not communicated and therefore they don't reach synergies. We need to strengthen these links and generate a sense of community. We strongly believe that collaborative work will help us build the world without barriers. And, well, it is now time to start our opening ceremony with the presence of our um, guests. I'd like to give the floor to Alberto Duran Lopez, who is the vice president, first vice president of the social group ONCE and vice president, executive vice president of um, Foundation ONCE. Alberto, it is an honor for us to have you today with us. And I have, we've been very lucky to be, uh, to see very closely the work you do and your commitment to inclusion, particularly with the generation of employment for people with disability. Thank you, Alberto, for being our host today, Foundation ONCE, and all the social group ONCE is an example uh, to follow in our commitment with the inclusion, responsibility, sustainability, and we, it's good to have the um, the chance to not just to hear it, but also to experience it. We co- hope to be able to continue learning for you in the coming days. Thank you very much, Carola. Thank you very much for having decided to uh, do this Zero Project uh, Event here today in our Illunium Tower. This is the this is this the base, the, the headquarter of our group. We have three branches within the group. Thank you very much, our Ministry of Science and Innovation. Thank you very much, Minister, for attending, and for, thank you very much for being here in, in your home. Thank you, Angel Martí, who is the uh, the head of. Um, Sorry, Martin Essel, the, the president of Foundation Essel, is 
currently in the this foundation is is expanding and is growing uh, is developing a new project that I will talk about a bit later. Thank you very much for keeping this project alive in the European um, scope. I thank you very much for promoting a platform to open up the the whole situation to everyone. Uh, and thank you for connecting with the foundation uh, Descubreme for you know for the connection with the Spanish speaking world. Thank you, Catalina Salle, who is the president of Foundation Descubreme, who's also with us uh, virtually. Hello, Chile, and hello the entire team in this Foundation Escribeme in Chile. Thank you from Foundation ONCE, thank you from Social Group ONCE, and thank you from uh, everyone. First of all, I'd like to show our, or, or share with you how proud we are of this uh, Zero Project Conference, which is dedicated to this um, uh, tandem of uh, accessibility, technology, innovation, and accessibility. Accessibility, technology, innovation, Innovation are elements that allow us to all together today be here. We can connect people here in Spain, people in Latin America, people with and without disabilities, working together, learning from each other. So from the Xenonte and uh, Social Group Onte, we are, are sure that the growth and sustainability must be inclusive, always inclusive, because otherwise I don't know whether we'll have growth, but we will, it would definitely not be sustainable in the mid and long term. Reaching such sustainability and inclusive development cannot happen if we don't uh, go through accessibility. Sustainability, if it is not inclusive, will not be uh, sustainability. It cannot be sustained in time and it will not reach everyone. That is why science and technology and innovation are three key pillars in order to together face the future challenges without leaving anyone behind. The Spanish government now with the cooperation funds has a, uh, a head, like the president of the government presenting it recently. He was talking about recovery and he used the word just. I was there and I said to him, I uh, I think that the title that is being found is the best possible. We then have to make that a reality. We have to make sure that it's just, that it has, that it reaches everyone, but at least the starting point is good. Then it will depend on the different stakeholders. They may be inclusive actors that are used to working on uh, inclusion, and in that case, the recovery will be just. If, he, if that's not the case, if we leave out uh, operating that uh, focus on groups uh, and inclusion, then the recovery will not be that just. Therefore, we have to look for a transformation process, a transforming recovery, which is what do we want. We want equality to be present. We want sustainability to be present. ONCE works within social group ONCE, which is uh, 83 years old, nearly 84. It was born because of the vocation to of, of, of social self-entrepreneurship of uh, blind people. But a special vocation in, in, you know, I mean, to train the blind people so they could have a job in the future. We were concerned about the blind children coming to the organization. We con- got concerned about accessibility, blind people, and other types of care, disabilities. People that are blind, deaf, and we from ONSA, we have been able to uh, project this to the, to the highest uh, levels of excellence with an effort, but also with support. People, we are the highest employer with people with this in Spain. Most of them are people with disability, and 53% of those are individuals. Uh, we're all we're from this and with disability and for disability. In the last 10 years, we have managed to impact with the government to over 68,000 people with disability. And to the largest extent, thanks to the joint um, uh, uh, science, technologies, innovation, and accessibility. Like I said before, without accessibility, obviously, and also in the last uh, the stages of the, the you know the development of it would be a very good halt. In 1978, we created the foundation of 11 for cooperation and. In- inclusion of people with disability. We, that's the key foundation. We have others. We have the FOAL Foundation for Latin America, ONCE uh, for um, deaf people, and we also have uh, another department dedicated on forming, guiding dogs. We have other um, projects we want to you always want to use people. We want to help people with disabilities. 
colleagues who already work in uh, the Onsa Foundation will also provide support to third parties. We want to make sure that in other projects at the national and international level, we talk or people talk about disability. We want a cross-sectional agenda on disability and the social economy and ordinary businesses in the world of foundations. The society just works a little bit of their time in the in favor of the uh, uh, advocacy of people with disability. In all the initiatives that we have, uh, um, training, employment, we have barriers, technical barriers, uh, social barriers, but also mental barriers, which are the most important thing. They all have the same objective, which is to improve the life of people with disability. We want to increase the visibility of their problems. If they're not visible, we cannot solve them. And we want to provide people with disability a lot of reasons, or at least some reason, on a daily basis so that they leave home every day. Um, in order for them to work, for them to get trained, in order for them to have leisure spaces, in order basically to join the society, to have a life within the society, to take part in the pop, um, political life, and basically everywhere. And we do that through employment training, which is necessary to reach employment, and the need to uh, eliminate barriers so that there are no discriminations, clear discriminations, that stop people with disability to reach their personal uh, objective. From Foundation on Thay, according to our mission and in the context that um, that we experienced in the pandemic and um, because we started working in 2016 uh, on the training of people with disability in digital um, skills and by 2020, even though it was a terrible year, it, would, it was actually a very bad year, but at the same time, it was a very a year of a lot of personal enrichment. A lot of people worked in the project and a lot of business and from outside the institution donate. They came to provide all they had. I'm talking about masks, inhalers, food, clothes, all those things so that we could distribute it amongst those groups of interest that needed it most. For us, that was an emotional salary. It was very important. There were people who were unemployed in the morning and in the afternoon. They they came to help us. They, they were helping us uh, to create masks and outfits, everything we needed. And for that, that reflected a level of commitment uh, that was incredible, and it meant that we were on the right path. Well, in managed to create two or nearly 8,000 employments, we trained over 300,000 people, uh, people, and we launched over 1,000 initiatives in the field of accessibility. The idea is to uh, have prescribers that within the society also prescribe accessibility as a, as a very important element in the I'm talking tourism, I'm talking social entrepreneurship, and just basically it is for accessibility to be present everywhere. We don't never want to be an expert on accessibility, but we have at least the basic knowledge in order to understand accessibility. This is important. It is important to be able to raise our hands if we need more support. So in 2016, we already uh, supported the training on digital skills. In 2020, it, the answer was that even though we had a virtual environment in many cases, we managed to get a lot of employment for uh, for our people in an environment where physical presence was um, forbidden. The working partnerships um, important. And first of all, with two uh, alliances. First of all, with the uh, foundation for um, counting on as uh, also uh, the great um, entity that uh, this Monday will have the first assembly in Barcelona. I think it's Monday and Tuesday. I think it's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in Barcelona. They'll have the first assembly, and uh, we will we will present uh, on Sunday um, on to to the for their assembly. Obviously, also Fundación Foundation this with whom we collaborate in the Latin American school. I think philanthropy is very important. I think if we put it in, uh, if they add um, access to that, that's also very important. We know that on our own, we can do some things, but if we are it, we can do more things and for a longer time. And in this case, no doubt, the synergies of all the stakeholders together here uh, represent great treasure.
With foundation Descubreme, with a vocation, with a vocation with Latin America, which is a region where we act through FOAL in cooperation uh, to train boys and girls that are blind in Latin America and all the Latin American countries, you know, Latin America and the Caribbean and all the countries, even in the most complicated countries. We're present everywhere with local actors and with public administrations in order to train today children that tomorrow should be able to have a higher opportunity to to have a job. And we've been doing this for about 30 years as Foundation Foal, um, but for the last 20, uh, well, we've been doing it for 25 years, but 30 as ONCE. We also work directly with people with disability, where we have industrial laundries. And uh, we also are prescribers of public policies in, in as much as we can if we are asked for support. And we want to do it with the local um, actors and stakeholders. We don't want to bring it on. We want to adapt to the way they work at a local level. We also have uh, pro- um, like the um, American Program on Disability. We have. Uh, we want to involve all that is within the administration leading in on this ability so that we can all work. We can all get further together. For the conclude, I'd like to. Jesus Fernando will do it, but I'll tell you how, how key it is to understand this access for disability as a fundamental and universal right that benefits everybody. Spain is very. Spain is uh, first industry is tourism. If tourism to compete better in that market. Countries that are in a phase of um, a, of a small development of infrastructures have the responsibility to develop accessibility so that they don't have to spend additional resources to to change things and to adapt things. To we have to watch out and we have to see accessibility from the beginning, from the design. It's not more expensive. What is expensive is to do it wrong and then having to repair allow us to build the spaces, products, and services that are more human. We'll be able to uh, get the uh, old people closer to us. Uh, you know, Europe is a very aging country, but the idea is to get those old people closer to the world of consumption. Uh, a lot of those people cannot access that because they have some limitations, and we have to bear in, that in mind. We have to think about the person with this disability. It has to have access to consume, but it has to have access to those products and services. We want to move the economy. There are also economic uh, factors. It's not just about rights. It's also about creating value. I have to think about that. Therefore, accessibility is an important element. I want to thank you all for your presence here today, and I would like to wish you a wonderful stay in Madrid. Thank you to the minister uh, for uh, focusing on inclusion uh, within her uh, her her job and uh, add quality to the world of disability. It's not a small world, okay? And we have 85 million inhabitants in Europe uh, or even 100 million uh, in inhabitants in Europe with disability. In Europe, we're talking about 15% of the population worldwide and we're talking about our important population and their relatives and old people who sometimes have similar needs and Therefore, we are working uh, for everybody's good, improving the quality of life of um, not very few people, but many, maybe not the majority, but definitely many people uh, with the aim of getting a better world for everyone, a world where everybody has the opportunity to participate, even for the most skeptical. If we all take part, it will be cheaper for everyone. If there are people who watch and people who do, then things get more complicated. But if we could all take part um, based on our uh, capacities, including disability, is we will all win and we will feel better also and it, we will feel that we build all this together and there'll be more hands. Thank you very much again to the two foundations that are with us here today. Thank you everyone also and I hope this is the first of the many visits to our home. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alberto, for your presence here this afternoon. I'm going to give the floor to Catalina Sayé. She is the uh, executive president of uh, Fundación Sayé and Fundación Descúbreme. 
Unfortunately, Catalina cannot be here present with us uh, this afternoon in Madrid, but we will be listening uh, to her in this video. Hello, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I am uh, Catalina Saya. I've got a uh, fur skin and I'm wearing a red sweater. I would like to congratulate all of you, all of you who are present and who are listening to us at this conference. Also, I would like to send my words of gratitude to ONFE Foundation and to the Scuprime Foundation for organizing this third conference, Zero Project Conference for Latin America and the Spanish-speaking world. For us, it is a privilege uh, being part of this uh, conference. This conference aimed at promoting the inclusion of persons with disabilities. The Scuri Foundation was created so as to defend the rights of people uh, with uh, disabilities. For us, uh, it is a commitment. It is a commitment that drives us through in our daily work. We have made lots of progress and we have collaborated in different initiatives so as to promote the lives and improve the lives of this uh, vulnerable uh, collective. In this uh, regard, in Chile, lots of, uh, a lot of progress has been made in the field of uh, job inclusion. However, there are still many barriers that do not allow people with disabilities to enter the job market. I'm referring to universal accessibility and ICT accessibility. So as to overcome these barriers, we have entered into partnerships so as to work in collaboration, so as to promote inclusion. Every year, we work with the best uh, experts in the fields of access, uh, jobs, inclusion, uh, political participation, ICTs. All these uh, matters are included within the uh, Convention of the United Nations for People's, uh, People with uh, Disabilities. We have created over 700 uh, solutions, innovative solutions in over 70 countries in the world. As you know, the subject of this, the conference of this year is, uh, is as accessibility and ICTs. It is our aim that states uh, do eliminate uh, barriers so that um, uh, buildings and uh, public uh, services are accessible to all people. According to the figures that we have from 2015, in Chile, social aids uh, regard the use of uh, um, computers, the accessibility in pavements, and this year we have started a new project for uh, disabilities, and we hope to improve the accessibility in terms of information technologies. According to the national plan, over a 40% of the population will be positively impacted by the result of this project. This, uh, throughout these last two years, um, with in the context of the pandemic, new opportunities have arisen, especially in the field of transportation and human mobility. Together with the use of uh, different public spaces for recreation, leisure, information, and culture. Also, many of the subjects we've been dealing with uh, regard sustainable uh, tourism. 
and this is an essential subject for economic recovery. We firmly believe that promoting uh, new initiatives that represent the uh, interests of people with disabilities is the right way to create a world without a barrier where everyone can fully enjoy uh, rights and can fully access and participate in all activities. I wish you all the best uh, throughout uh, today and tomorrow during the sessions of the conference. And you will be able to listen to over 15 experts who will present you with best practices, uh, information technology projects, uh, results, and will present you with projects which are innovative, useful, and scalable in nature. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Catalina, por tus palabras. Thank you very much, uh, Catalina, for your presentation. Just as you have mentioned, and um, Alberto also emphasized that the work that you are doing is essential to us uh, to create a more inclusive society. Today, I would like to uh, give the floor to Martin Esle, who is the founder of Essel Foundation. He is also the founder of the Zero Project of zero project at a worldwide level. Thank you. Everyone. I would like uh, to introduce myself for those who will not see me. Uh, I'm Martin Essel. I'm 60 years of age. Uh, a tall man with some... Uh, Hairs, uh, wearing a suit and a white shirt, and I'm so happy to be with you in Madrid. Uh, this amazing uh, event of the Zero Project Conference in Spanish. Unfortunately, is it is not my mother tongue. I'm uh, speaking German normally, but I do my best to give you some information. Uh, in English, and uh, we have amazing interpreters who can uh, help uh, you to understand me. Thank you so much for that. First of all, I would like to warmly thank the amazing team uh, at uh, the Foundation Descubreme, but also the Foundation ANSE for organizing such, such a stellar conference uh, in the premises of the headquarter uh, of ONCE in Madrid, which is really um, accessible. And this is an amazing building we are uh, today. Thank you so much for all of that. And what better way to celebrate a world that is beginning to open up again and our continued partnership than by having a, a powerful hybrid conference hosted in Madrid and showcased from Chile. Now that we are all coming out of a difficult couple of years, the Zero Project couldn't have hoped for a better ally to move from strength to strength in its continued mission of highlighting innovative practices and policies. I'm absolutely excited to stay tuned to the various sessions that we have in store over the next two days and to see the incredible partnerships and networks that are born out of this collaboration. I would also like to thank the teams of both organizations for bringing us together across continents to discuss the importance of accessibility, innovation and breaking barriers in today's world a world with zero barriers. Innovations exist across all sectors of activities in all countries. And I think we can agree that everyone must have equal opportunities to access fundamental needs through the use of affordable assistive technologies and services in education, political life, or cultural activities. Part of the urge 
we have carried out every single one of these innovations has been compiled in the freely available Zero Project Almanach, which has been produced in accessible Spanish, in English and in German formats. However, this collection is far from over and we uh, urge you to share with us the work of organizations that are creating a just world for everyone. We at the Zero Project are dedicated to support this vision of inclusion through innovation by identifying effective policies and practices that improves the lives of persons with disabilities. It is by keeping our eye on this goal that over the past years, the Zero Project has become a unique global network of some thousands of experts from 180 countries globally. Together with this network, we have developed a unique methodology of finding, researching, exploring, and communicating innovative solutions. And in recent years, we recognized that technology has tremendous potential for removing barriers. But it is also through these connections that we are all here today. We would like to thank Fondation Descouperment, but also Fondation ONSE for hosting this event. And as importantly, also our sponsors, Camara Oficial Española de Comercio de Chile, the Innovation Laboratory from the Mexican Development Bank, Startup Chile by Corfo, the Chilean National Tourism Service and the Chilean National Disability Service. It is through the hard work that ensures that technology and digitalization plays an important role in this year's conference, for without it, we would not have been able to host this one of a, a kind meeting of minds. We have also made it our personal mission to ensure that all Zero Project conferences are accessible online. This runs in line with our S of being fully transparent, accessible and inclusive. Through the work of the Zero Project, we have also created a unique collection of innovative policies and practices that are verified through experts' feedback over the past years. Therefore, we have also launched an accessible video streaming platform as well as database that connects all the expertise experts, nominations, and conferences from the last years for both the English and the Spanish-speaking communities. By connecting it all and opening it up, we intend to add even more value to this treasure over the next few years and beyond. However, coming back to the focus of the next two days, we have the to hear of more innovations and innovators from this region who uh, are thought leaders in the field of disability, sharing about the existing developments for all of us. And if all of us just take one innovation, carrying them to your home country, I think we would have been... Uh, in a very good mood to create an accessible world for all. But I will not hold up you any longer and will now hand over to José Luis Martínez, the General Director of Fondación ONCE, for his opening remarks. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Martín, por acompañarnos.
Thank you very much, Martin, for your presence uh, here. And also thank you very much for your trust in both uh, ONCE Foundation and the School Remain Found- and Foundation. Uh, thank you very much for your work and your contribution so as to make this Zero Project Conference uh, possible in this wonderful building. Working in the uh, public uh, field is uh, is essential to our work and to our mission, and this is why I would like to thank uh, the Ministry for Social Work, uh, Diana uh, Moran. Also, thank you very much to Anna Pelaev. Uh, who uh, is very active in the field of the all types of discrimination against uh, women. And now, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Diana Moran. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Alberto Moran, Vice President of uh, Grupo Once, Catalina Zaye, uh, Founder of uh, President of the Scubreme Foundation. Thank you very much. Uh, hello to Carola Rubia and to Javier. Thank you very much to everyone. And also, I would like to expand my gratitude for your invitation to your conference. I am a woman, I've got fair skin, I've got uh, brown hair, and I'm, and I'm wearing a white um, shirt, blouse, rather. I would like to thank you for your work. I would like to thank uh, Fundación Once for the work. Also, my words of uh, gratitude and recognition to Zero Project, belonging to Essel Foundation and Descubreme Foundation. Just let me say that your work contributes to the creation of a fairer uh, world. I am sure that your initiatives will help uh, it, the integration of uh, people with disabilities. When we think about uh, science, we tend to reduce uh, scientific discoveries to main insights and discoveries. However, sometimes we ignore the collective work conducted in the science field. Sometimes we think of science as a complete whole that is awesome to us and that is incomprehensible to us. Sometimes it is impossible for us to understand how a series of cables connected among themselves allows us to communicate from different parts of the world. Also, how to um, come up with a complex diagnosis and and um, come up uh, with uh, uh, health uh, treatments. As Minister for Science, I like referring to the practical side of uh, science instead of to the myths and, uh, and literature. Uh, science uh, work uh, on the basis of, uh, of uh, solutions, on the basis of problems and uh, solutions. Whenever we think about uh, science, we need to think about the social applications uh, in, in among them the social inclusion of people with disabilities. Why? Because science is not neutral and uh, groups of people with uh, disabilities, their uh, leisure, their culture, their way of integrating in society will be benefited if we stop thinking of uh, science as something which is uh, uh, away from them. Why? Because we, as scientists, are the ones uh, who design scientific designs, and we must think of their uses and applications and of the special needs and specificities of people with disabilities. The aim should be improving the lives of those with disabilities. Science and technology as a way 
state of caring for those who most uh, need it in uh, society. The power of um, science uh, to the service of society. It also tells experiences and strengthening knowledge. It also implies uh, the application to daily life. And it implies also cooperation from different uh, parties, from the sector, people with disabilities, uh, public sector, private sector. And we need to look beyond the countries, beyond barriers, beyond borders. And we need to, to stop compartmentalizing with an open mind, and we need uh, to use technology as a new tool for change. In order to do that, we need political will. I, in my capacity as a minister, I fully defend uh, the avant fully uh, defend being at the forefront, fully uh, defend that the inclusion of people with disabilities is enforced for society via public uh, partnerships between universities and public of uh, projects are being in the field of uh, in the field of accessibility and in public funds. They are using technologies such as and artificial intelligence, therefore connecting needs with practical solutions. Let me give you some examples. The new paradigm on um, um, rehabilitation, on uh, robotic uh, rehabilitation, conducted and being developed by the Elche University. Also, the uh, and its applications uh, to um, vision for black the development of a modular prosthetic uh, robotic uh, uh, technologies promoted by the uh, hospital for paraplegic in Murcia. Also, the uh, works conducted by University for the for improving the see of um, a, in artificial intelligent uh, uh, based uh, uh, support and mechanisms to improve the lives of people with disability. All this research conducted in our universities and research centers and the translation of uh, the generated knowledge into practical applications needs to be based on robust uh, scientific uh, structures. In order to do that, we have uh, promoted uh, the works of Fedetti and we are uh, applying, putting into practice the resilience uh, and recovery plan. The results are outstanding, one of them being the exoskeleton uh, recently discovered by a, a woman, a, a female a science, science, science uh, scientific uh, person who is um, a and the discovery being that um, a person, a boy, is now able to stop thanks to this uh, uh, discovery, bionic discovery. These examples uh, are a testimony to our will, to the conviction that technology must be adapted to, to people, that technology must uh, remove barriers. And uh, to do that, we need not only rhetoric and metaphor, but also political action oriented uh, to the improvement of society. I know 
many of you are knowledgeable about this field and that you work that you share challenges with us that that we work together and uh, those challenges uh, come from uh, a technology uh, from the technology revolution and that makes us uh, share our experiences that makes us uh, face the uh, same uh, challenges we shouldn't uh, rely on easy solutions, but uh, we should work on the basis of uh, technology and technology advances uh, on the basis of uh, technology, uh, on the basis of the political uh, support that we um, are willing to provide to you. Therefore, the partnership between the public administrations and uh, and the different involved parties uh, and especially associations of uh, uh, people with uh, disabilities is essential the approach uh, should be an autonomous approach and the aim should be a full inclusion by admitting and assuming that diversity uh, means inclusion and progress. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best for the conference. Thank you very much, dear Minister, for accompanying our session. Your words are very inspiring, and I think we know that science and technology play a key role. We actually have a very special guest. We have uh, someone we've known for a long time, and definitely one of the the persons, the more better skilled on this. So I'm talking about Jesus Hernández Galán, Director of Universal Accessibility and Innovation at ONCE Foundation and Vice President of the European Network for Accessible Tourism. Jesus, thank you very much for being with us today. And you have the floor. Thank you very much, Carola. Thank you very much, everyone, and good afternoon, everyone. Well, we're going to talk about accessible technology. I'm going to try and think a little bit about the importance of technology and its accessibility allow people with disabilities to be. That is accessibility. That is the question, isn't it? Because if we have a technology that is not accessible, that is going to stop 50% of that population, that is uh, uh, 1 billion people worldwide. We're talking about the whole when Imagine the whole China being disabled. There will be total for uh, accessibility is going to allow the whole citizen, the, the, all the citizens, to access everything in a safer way, simple way. Um, they're going to be able to access technology. Uh, and that means we will all be able to be just one. Um, person. First of all, I'd like to talk about something that. Is there a problem? Something that whilst the. Uh, of the most tedious and bored and complicated uh, jobs that we have to focus with uh, when it when it comes to accessibility is um, the standardization and I say it's boring because it's not fun it's a very it's a rather complex job and you have to uh, match interests sometimes uh, Opposing interests, you know, interest, interests of the industry, interests of people with disabilities, interest of public administrations, and interest of the administrations, talking consumers associations, for example. And the idea is to reach a consensus in order to have a norm, a rule that defines how accessibility should be. And that takes quite a long time. And we have taken part in different, uh, different standards from our foundation at the European level. I'm talking about mandates that have been launched by the European Commission. We have worked in the last third, the last three mandates, we have been developing standards related to accessibility, technology, adapting technology to different goods and services and to the already built environment. Next year, the, the Accessibility Act will be transposed an act that when it was launched, when it was with complete, but it didn't cover all the the needs of people with this and um, uh, 
would be of mandatory compliance. But it's true that the European uh, Accessibility Act forces uh, everyone, uh, particularly the technology sector, to incorporate um, accessibility to all individuals. And the European market is no wonder a very important market. And because of its size, it's also a very interesting market for any manufacturer at a global, any manufacturer of technology. And this is going to have a very positive impact on accessibility to technology at the world level because any company, no matter where they manufacture, whether that is in, in Europe, in Japan, or in the US, whatever, any company that wants to trade their products in Europe, they, those products will have to be made accessible. That is going to have a very positive impact at a global level. And how do we make sure that that compliance with the legislation is effective through the certification? We do it through certification, and that's why from on the foundation we have developed some certification schemes that are proprietary in order to facilitate the accessibility of technology products. For a long time, we started to develop uh, a model mobile, which is um, uh, as, uh, as devices, and we also have the AT certification for hardware products. In fact, in uh, Las Vegas, the event, the CES event, which is the most, uh, the biggest technology event, well, Samsung from Korea wanted to present our certification, our ATEC certification in their TVs. That means we are pioneering in Spain with the launch with this type of certifications. We also want to talk about how relevant is the certification associated to training. The courses that we are developing are being certified through blockchain technology. We are working on the certification of these uh, training courses. I'm going to m- move on. But as I said before, technology could uh, fully exclude us if we're not careful. It could be an element of full discrimination. Obviously, because of the lack of accessibility, that can leave us out. For example, the security systems that are currently being implemented in many technology environments may leave us completely out. For example, uh, someone with no hands or no fingers will not be able to use its fingerprint in order to access uh, a device. Or if you don't have iris, you will not be able to access through biometric um, uh, sensors. You might have seen also that there are banks where in order to get an online in order to get an online bank account you have to take a photo of yourself um, looking at the camera. Of course if you if you can't see you will not be able to fit your face within the box that you see on the screen. And if you have mobility problems like me, it becomes really, really difficult to get close in order to get my face close to the box in order to take in order for the camera to take a photo, or something that's already happening. Old people that already have an ID card, when they try to uh, input the numbers of the ID card, they say it cannot be accepted because it is a permanent ID card and it, ha- it never expires, so you cannot add the expiry date. These are elements uh, that if the person developing the technology is not aware of these, the developers, if they don't, if not aware of it, they don't incorporate it, they don't integrate it, and they end up developing algorithms with algorithms that leave us completely out. They're totally excluding. That is why we work a lot in order to incorporate universities, etc. The minister, the minister was talking about this, uh, talking about university and science and everything. Well, I like to highlight how important university is in future professionals so that they learn about accessibility. We have for many years developed methodologies. We have been developing um, educational material to help teachers uh, to incorporate design for all within their training processes. For example, also disruptive technologies that will be a 
to and how can they leave us out and they may uh, left us completely excluded if we're not careful. It seems like now the future is metaverse, but how a blind person is going to be able to surf within the metaverse? How is that individual going to be a person within metaverse if we do not develop accessible technology? Or how the technologies that are coming in the future of augmented reality or mixed reality, uh, how is that going to work if we don't use all those multiple realities in multimodal format? If we don't take all that into consideration, we'll be totally excluded. We can see how Facebook reached an agreement with Ray-Ban and those, uh, that, that camera integrated in the glasses so that we can also have augmented reality in your eyes. If you can't see, if you have um, uh, some problem with your visibility, then you will not be able to get that. But in any case, uh, the technology that has been developed can be totally inclusive. It can enhance at the same time the capacities, the capabilities that we don't have. It may actually enable us to do things that we currently cannot do because of our um, whatever our disabilities. The minister was talking about uh, assistential uh, medicine, the, the exos, uh, robotic exoskeleton that will allow children to stand up. Um, uh, she, some companies have been in our accelerators. There are some startups have been there, and and one of them was a, a, a winner of the uh, of the big event that is going to take place at the, in June here in Madrid. There, there will be a, this is an online voting, and then I recommend you to vote. Elena is a Spanish uh, researcher for her to become the top uh, European researcher. Also, 3D technologies, for example. Uh, we have a portal called Accessibilitas, where there are a lot of supporting elements at a low cost that can help us all to have a an easier daily life, like artificial intelligence. And in fact, as soon as I finish, you'll have to go and attend a session on artificial intelligence on our hub where we have the best professionals and the best experts on artificial intelligence talking about how this can be inclusive or exclusive. How can we be completely left out if we're not careful? And it's like image recognition. Image recognition can actually help a lot of people, people with intellectual disabilities to understand visual uh, disabilities. It can help those people to understand and capture the information of the environment or how the connection between and the machine and the environment. CI brain computer interfaces. Uh, how can that help people of the uh, that it could help us directly connect from our brain with other part of our body. We can connect to machines in order to perform any or some kind or any kind of activities. Now I'd like to show you a video on a Microsoft project that we have implemented on the Santiago's San Jacques pilgrimage. How sound, um, some sound technology, be neural technology can help people with visual problems orientate orientate themselves in pilgrimage path this is a guy that works through your mobile phone and you the sound what it does is a localized locates the individual using the app, and then through some markers, virtual beacons, guides that person in an urban environment and in a rural environment, both. With that, the aim was to analyze how that technology really helps the users. The app uh, indicates the direction uh, the, the right uh, direction of, of the path. And there's something that it does very well, and it is that from a scratch, I can determine whether I am going in the opposite direction or I'm going on the right direction. 
peak in 2.65 kilometers. We want all our software to be accessible to people with disabilities and Foundation Onth plays a key role when it comes to telling us what it is that we must improve, what is it that we must include for that software to really to be really accessible. And Microsoft will believe that the future goes through or entails artificial intelligence technologies in order to enhance and amplify human capacities. I think we still have a collaboration fields that we can't even imagine yet because technology is going so fast and Microsoft has been so leading in the development of disruptive and emerging technologies that I'm sure in a few years' time we will be collaborating in fields that now we can't even define. Well, another project that we are also working on together with the uh, Andalusia Council is that of uh, uh, rural fires or forest fires and uh, um, evacuation. It is something that concerns us a lot. It is about how to communicate someone, particularly somebody with uh, hearing problems, with intellectual disabilities, visual disabilities, how to communicate with that person so that he or she has all the necessary information in, in, in need of evacuation. We have developed an app to help all the emergency systems, all the uh, um, security forces in order to improve the security of citizens with the disabilities in these type of um, events. Another project that we have also launched together with Microsoft based on artificial intelligence and focused on people with intellectual disability is a system to assess the soft skills. As you know, soft skills are very well uh, considered when it comes to um, searching or looking for a job. But if you don't understand the tests, if you have an intellectual disability and you cannot understand what you're being asked, then it will be very difficult for you to be assessed, right? So through these artificial intelligence systems, we have developed a project also based on easy reading and pictograms in order to help people with disability to um, to do these tests and for the test to be assessed. Nowadays, companies don't only use CVs in order to assess professional experience and educational uh, skills of, uh, of candidates. They also evaluate other skills, so-called soft skills. Amongst those, we can include the capacity to adapt to change or emotional intelligence. The same happens when you want to access specialized uh, training or professional training. According to LinkedIn, Uh, amongst the most relevant soft skills in 2021, we see responsibility within the work ethic, adaptability, and emotional intelligence. These are traces with the, of the, our personality that we have chosen to be assessed through GOSA application. The uh, GOSA's main goal is for people with disability to be able to access assessment tests of soft skills in an inclusive environment, an accessible environment that is also fun and um, customizable. Thanks to the implementation of artificial uh, intelligence and gamification, artificial intelligence is included through the cognitive services of Microsoft. At the same time, a gamification system has been developed uh, that looks like a jigsaw puzzle so that the user is encouraged to get to the end. You can access the application through an accessible web portal for accessible for people with dis- disabilities, cognitive disabilities and physical disabilities. They can choose between a easy reading, a storytelling, or both. You accompany our character through three small experiences in order to assess the different personality and responsibility, um, adaptability, and emotional stability. Well, GOSA is a project of Foundation Onthe with the support of Microsoft. Okay, and in order to conclude, I'm going about a uh, a project on assistential uh, robotics. 
we work a lot on open innovation process uh, projects. We face, um, we analyze and we face processes with the association of people with disability, so that in in the environment we analyze the environments where we face problems, and we analyze, for example, um, transport environments when you have to travel long distances through public transport. If you have to do um, changes of different means, different different means of transport, etc., and we decided to launch this in order to guide in the transport. This is a project that has been 100% certified as R&D. The ODSs are also certified, so it's a fully sustainable project and is a 100% R&D project. We are therefore in line uh, of the um, instruments uh, suggested by the government. I'm going to show you this video for you to understand it better. The project Access to Transport develops the first uh, assistential robots in large spaces like hospitals, shopping malls, train stations, and airports, amongst others. These images show the robot in an autonomous way mapping the environment of a large shopping center, the windows uh, of the shops, and and we adapt the wheels to the different uh, floors, and that's um, one of the challenges that we face. This has been assessed by our robots in our uh, facilities as a, of Estasia, Espacia. Thanks to this, we managed, managed to adjust some elements like the stop and go pu- um, buttons. We adjusted the interface. The, we adjusted the sensors of closeness and, uh, and navigation and also the speed of the robot. Then we could access a train station like the Chamartin train station in Madrid. In order to perform the first tests in a place where there are more people and more obstacles and there are places like, there are things like lifts. Then we perform the full mapping of the place, identifying fixed and mobile obstacles. And we wanted to autonomously draw an almost exact map of the facilities. At the end of the morning, the robot was traveling around with uh, incredible accuracy throughout the whole train station. Well, for those of you who've not been able to see it, I'll describe the robot. This is a platform. It's some kind of trolley with a new support. Do not think about one of those humanoid uh, robot. Uh, the use cases that we can think of are very uh, wide. We're seeing use cases in large uh, shopping centers in order to do your shopping because it may help you to find your product, but it may help you to uh, drop a bag or drop a suitcase. Initially, it was thought for uh, a transport stations and, and, and things like suitcases, but it's been developed. And this is all from me. I'll conclude here saying that good design enables and bad design uh, disables, and therefore we must develop technology that definitely enables uh, us, that allows us to be and that doesn't exclude us. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias, Jesús. Thank you very much, uh, Jesús, for sharing these initiatives and uh, uh, the opportunity. to listen to all those details. Well, once again, we'd like to thank the round table for attending. Thank you for the words, and we'd also like to invite you to stay for the next phase of this presentation. But uh, you're, you're welcome to stay here, and we move on to the next video. Thank you very much for being with us. Okay.
está todavía no te le llamo ya, le llamo. ¿Aló? Para continuar con esta ceremonia de apertura, seguiremos dando paso a Okay, we're going to move on to a welcome video by the Minister of Development of the Government of Chile, uh, Mrs. Paula Poblete. The Social Development Family will want to give a welcome to those who are on the French 2022 for Latin America and this speaking world on accessibility and communication. We know as Minister, how important it is, how permanent the challenge is when it comes to overcoming the barriers that limit people with disabilities. That is why we highlight when we value these type of uh, initiatives that join different organizations and that also cross borders. As a Ministry of Social Development and Family, we wish you a lot of success and we um, repeat our commitment with inclusion and the contribution to developing actions that improve the daily life of people with disabilities and their families. Okay, well, thank you very much, Minister uh, Poblete, for these welcoming remarks. And now I would like to leave you with uh, Gabriela Villanueva, which is the head of um, disability department in the government of Chile, who also has uh, uh, sent us a video. Would like to send you this uh, great. We'd like to greet everyone attending the Zero Project for Latin America and Spanish-speaking world. Uh, from our department, uh, from the service, uh, National Service of Inability of the Chile State, we value enormously this initiative, the gathering um, uh, around solutions, innovative solutions, in order to make this situation more effective for uh, the people with disabilities in our societies. In our country, we are developing several initiatives, and as a state, we're generating uh, organizations to create uh, social civil uh, side to the that is more uh, uh, inclusive that's why we want to invite people with more experience to add and to join this project so that they we can uh, be more inclusive that we have faced the challenges and i wish you a lot of success in this conference or zero project 2022 the national department of vector uh, in order to conclude the uh, director of the Department of Tourism of Chile. And here we have a video by Mrs. Beatriz Roma. From the National Service for Tourism in Chile, I'd like to greet in the Zero Project event. From the tools and accessibility and inclusion are cross-sectional access. Uh, please get all the information you come from this event so that we can improve our tourism. Thank you very much, Director. In order to conclude this first part of the uh, conference, I'd like to give you a quick summary of the activities that we have prepared for you today. Likewise, you can go through the detail agenda of today and tomorrow on our website, latinamerica.zeroproject.org. O -R -G -Org. And after this opening session, we'd like to have speeches led by Michael Fende, director of Zero Project, and we it will count on the uh, participation of uh, Meclada Borrero, senior expert on disability and director of the Unemployment Department, Social Aspects and Inclusion for the European Commission, and also Anna Pelaez Narbaez, High Commissioner for Solidarity and International Cooperation of the Social Group ONSE and Vice President of the European Disability Forum. And in this session, we will share experiences and lessons coming from Latin America and Europe with regards to understanding a persons with disability from the expert uh, outlook of our speakers. Well, this uh, great thing, you know, that, that is a great introduction to this conference and expert will have three uh, topic sessions have been programmed and that will be distributed through our uh, web platform. Sessions will have to experts topics for accessibility, like 
tourism without barriers, for example. This will prove that technology can contribute to shorten distances and uh, pull down barriers in order to get to another world. Here we will be have the moderation of Jesus Hernandez. You've already heard him talking. Is the director of universal accessibility of funding. That's it, Javier. And then we'll have the opportunity to talk about a very special program for our discussion. It's the TIC program, Innovation for Inclusion. This is an initiative led by um, Productivity Pact in Chile and in collaboration with the Inter-American Bank. Uh, Foundation, the Scrimme and Zero Project, where we wanted to promote the accessibility of people with disabilities in the labor market through the replication of technological innovations in Chile. This session will be moderated by Ingrid Rojas, General Manager of Pact and Productability in Chile. And in order to conclude the session, we also have the opportunity to talk about something also very important related to accessibility, which is access to information and web. Uh, here we talk about the advantages of using digital tools in order to reach solutions to everyday problems and we will have a lot of people the, 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 the um, contributions to of, uh, people from all over the world we'd like to thank our um, sponsors for their generosity supporting us in this conference we have this uh, Spanish Chamber of Commerce in Chile the innovation um, department of the Latin American Bank Startup Chile Corfo the Ministry of Employment in Chile the International National Service of Tourism in Chile, the uh, National Service of Disability in Chile, and nowadays we also have the Minister of Science and Technology of the Spanish Government. So let us now introduce our next uh, session. I invite Immaculada Porrero, Ana Peláez, and Michael Fembeck to take part in this uh, session that is just starting right now. Michael Fembeck uh, will be our moderator, and we are looking forward to listening uh, to listening to them and learning about accessibility and universal rights. <laughs> 